The story that Mark is telling in this, the writer of Mark is the speaker in this. This is not a lesson from Jesus. This is a lesson from Mark, the writer of Mark, to us and to his readers. And it tells of Jesus being absolutely exhausted. He is just beat. And so he says to his disciples, God, i, I got to get away for a little while. Let's jump in the boats. All the other boats can go with us. Let's jump in the boats and let's go to the other side and give me just some time to be at rest. And he gets in the boat and he's so dog-tired that he lays down in the stern on a cushion and falls sound asleep. So asleep that this violent storm comes. It doesn't wake him. He's still asleep. Have you ever been that tired? Have you ever been that dog tired? It's hard for women. Men, like Mike, he can, when his head hits the pillow, he's asleep, and then it takes a lot to wake him up. Women, we wake on a dime, all right? You know, anything moves in the house, you're up and you're stirred. And so we don't understand this kind of sleep, but this is heavy sleep. Jesus is really into this REM mode. He's out of it. And it's important for us to remember that um, he's had a very busy day. You know, when the, this appears in all the Gospels, and, you know, at one point he's fed the 5,000 in front of these disciples. He's done this. His people have been pulling at him and tearing at him. He's really drained, and so he's out for the count. And as the storm grows more and more violent, the boats begin to get filled, all the boats. It only mentions this one, but all the boats with them are beginning to get filled with water. And the 12 are beginning to get filled with hysteria. They're getting really scared. And up on the screen, you're going to see only one picture today, and it's Rembrandt's The Storm in the Sea of Galilee. And it's by Rembrandt, and it hangs in Boston. And it's an amazing picture, and it depicts the artist's fear. And so you can see all the fear in the faces, and you can see this violent storm. And, and I'd never thought of it as being quite as violent as Rembrandt depicted it. But, it, you know, and it's nighttime, and you can understand how they'd be scared to death. And finally, the disciples, they can't wait any longer. And in frustration, they yell at Jesus. And they say, are you going to let us die here? After all this, are you going to let us die? Wake up. And so he wakes up, and he stands, and he says, peace to the water. And actually, it's a poor translation. He actually said, shut up. But they don't like to put, so he said, shut up. And the water just stops. And then he turns around, and he says, guys, you've seen all this that I've done for you. Do you have such little faith? Do you not know anything yet? Where is your faith? Why are you not with me yet on this? And of course, what I think is, I bet not only the sea felt a little humbled and quieted at that moment. The mistake is to think, though, is to think that this is simply a sermon that says that we're supposed to be more like Jesus in a storm and, you know, tell things to be quiet and stuff like that. That would be one level I guess you could preach on about this. But I want to talk a little bit more about that. After worship today, I want you to go up there and I want you to look at that Rembrandt or Google it. There's a thousand pictures if you Google it. And I picked the one that was the clearest I could to get it up there. But in this picture, there is, of course, you'd have the 12 disciples and you have Jesus. So your count in the boat is 13. If you really look closely, the count in the boat is 14. And inside that magnificent ship, that boat right there tossing in the wind, is a self-portrait of Rembrandt. He put himself on the boat. Y'all, that gives me chills. This man drew himself in the boat. I think that's really cool. He is saying that he is in the boat with Jesus and the disciples. And he still experiences storms and fears. He's admitting that to the world. Most of us would like to project that we are the exception, (laughs) that we don't are bothered by storms, or that, that our faith is so strong that we just don't even notice that they're coming through. But storms come, and faith fails, and no one is exempt. So we need to paint ourselves also onto the boat with Jesus. Now listen. What's really cool is putting this into context also. You have to understand, at the time that Mark wrote this, the early church, all the way through, boat is equivalent to church. It means the same 
thing in stories that we read about. The Roman Catholics, which would be the first organized religion, they called themselves the Roman Catholics, or the Catholics, the United, um, their uh, motto is that they are the bark of Peter. Bark it means boat. They are the boat of Peter. Architecturally, right now, you are sitting in the nave. Did you know that? That's called the nave. That area is called the nave. Latin for boat. <laughs> You're sitting in the boat. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And the ceilings of most churches look like the prow of a boat, only upside down, but it looks like the prow of a boat. Face it, folks, we're all in the same boat, <laughs> and we all have storms, and we all have breathtaking dawns that take our breath away, and we all have all this in between, both of those two experiences. Now to the sea. The sea back then, ooh, very important part. The sea back then meant where all demons live. Anything that goes bump in the night or in the day went there to sleep at night because that was its home. The sea is the home of everything evil. And so what do we have? Evil, this is so Jesus is exhausted from the day. He doesn't say, I'm going to go up on a mountain and pray to God this time. He does sometimes. He says, oh, let's climb in a boat and I'm going to go into the land of the enemy. That's what he said, you know, basically what he's saying. And I'm going to fall asleep, and I'm going to have the deepest sleep I've had in a long time because I'm not afraid. It's so one of the things that's being said in this is that he's willing to go into, and the people reading it or hearing it back then would have gotten all that symbolism. They would have understood that the boat was the church, and the church can go into any kind of enemy territory, and it will be fine. It'll be okay. It will be safe because Jesus will be in the boat with them. See all that kind of symbolism, and that meant a lot to people 2,000 years ago. It still should mean a lot to us. Still should mean a lot to us. The purpose of the story is to identify Jesus as the one who can master all those unruly forces and make them hold at bay for us. Mark says Jesus will be right there in the boat with us because boat. We all know, we're old enough, some of us, to know storms will come. You may not know it until, though, it looks like for all the world that your boat's going under. You may not know that you need or that you have Jesus' presence. And if you don't know Jesus, maybe you haven't been to the point where the boat's been going under yet. But just know that Jesus is with you in the boat and will surround you when you need it. We attended a gathering. Um, a group of people. We used to go every week to a party that was a group of Christians that got together every week. And there, I'm, excuse me, every month. And um, there would always be a designated speaker. And the speaker, you wouldn't know who it was. They would know who they are and they would have practiced and stuff like that. But it was a lay person and they would be getting up there and they would speak to the group about um, how they have felt God's presence in their life. And normally it was just normal stuff and everything. Well, Mike and I's first meeting that we went to, the first one that we would have gone to, um, it would be called a PO party. So we were brand new to the group, and about 100 of us were brand new to this group going. And uh, this woman gets up and starts giving her talk, and um, I've never forgotten, and this was 1994. And what the woman said was that there, she is the daughter of the head of a coven of witches that is in Glen County and specifically also St. Simon's Island. Never heard about it since. This is a long time ago, but she said it exists. And her father was the head poopa, whatever that would be called, wizard, I don't know. Um, so he was the head dude. And um, she was four years old at the time. And, this, and she had never heard of God. Four years old. Grew up in a church with witches. And she'd never heard of God. And they were at this coven meeting, I suppose, and they were doing all the things that they do. And um, it was time for her to have a rite of passage, the first rite of passage. And I hesitated. I asked Mike, I don't think this is an appropriate story to tell. And he says, no, this is the exact appropriate story to tell. So they're at this coven, and, and, and then all this hooping and hawing or whatever it is that goes on. And because it's her time of rite of passage, they pick her up. And they take her over, and they have this uh, a cardboard box, and they put her in the cardboard box and close the top, and there's no light inside. 
And so she's very, very scared, and she's feeling around. And there is an um, expired um, cat in the box with her. And so she becomes very, very afraid and gets hysterical. And all of a sudden, the box fills with light. And she is covered and feels the, she feels like she is being held in someone's arms. And a man says to her, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to be all right. Just settle down. And so she was able to go to sleep in his arms in that box on that day. She still never knew what that was. They came in and took care of her until many years later when someone started talking to her about God and God being a presence that would be there when you need them. And so that's, that was just an amazing story to me because she had no connect. There would have been no reason for her. And God showed up in the boat. God is in the boat. It's interesting that I have a few times in my life when I have been in such a raging storm and have been screaming that I need God to show up now and have not necessarily felt that. I have not been surrounded. I have not gotten that peace. And yet two times in my life, when I really needed it, God was there. And it might be a total. Those two times might only be a minute in length altogether when I have been in the presence of God and been surrounded. But those, that one minute is enough to change you for the rest of your life, to last you a lifetime, to be surrounded in the presence of God. I hope that all of you know that. The purpose of this story is to identify Jesus as the one who can master the unruly seas of our, and storms of our life. Mark says he'll be right there in the boat with us. David went into battle because he knew he had faith. He knew that his God was with him going into battle. There was no doubt in his mind. You need to be and seek to know God that well that there is no doubt in your mind that as you go through life, and you know, battles don't come up on slowly. <laughs> Storms come up suddenly. They come up on you suddenly. And you need to know that God is with you through all this time. God's in this room right now when we don't have the battle. But he also doesn't leave us at the door when we walk out. God's home is inside of you, and he is with you at all times. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.